HSBC's Chief Executive Stuart Gulliver and Chairman Douglas Flint are under fire on multiple fronts. Politicians have criticised the duo over a string of recent scandals and investors are unhappy about declining profitability. Some have called for heads to roll. Instead, Mr Gulliver and Mr Flint plan to unveil a plan for further shrinkage and simplification of Europe's biggest bank. As HSBC prepares for a potentially fiery annual shareholder meeting on Friday, I'm joined by the FT's financial editor, Patrick Jenkins, to discuss how serious the bank's problems are. So, Patrick, one of the, the big um, uh, criticisms of HSBC has been over its culture and a string of scandals, as I mentioned, uh, from money laundering for drug cartels in Mexico right up to more recently, accusations that they helped uh, rich clients uh, to evade the tax man uh, in their Swiss private bank. Um, how, how damaging has this all been and how much of a problem is there for HSBC? Well, I think reputationally it's pretty dreadful if you run through all the things that have gone wrong. As you say, there was the Mexican stuff, there's the, the Swiss private bank, there's been along the way, there's been uh, other uh, market manipulation scandals around foreign exchange and so on, uh, which have caught up other banks as well, but um, HSBC now is probably uh, at the top of the list of the, the most scandal hit uh, banks of the past few months really. So they're on the naughty step. Yes, but, um, they would say of course that these are all legacy issues that are now catching up with them and that they're being unfa unfairly tarnished and that the leadership that's in charge now is uh, cleaning up yeah, past Mr. Minister. Gulliver and Flint, they came in in 2011 with a mandate to, uh, after the fine for the Mexican um, uh, money laundering, uh, the mandate to kind of clean up the bank and exactly. tidy it up and tighten up controls. And they say they've done that. Yeah. Uh, I think the problem is, though, that alongside all of that fallout, which has attracted the interest of politicians and regulators and authorities around the world, the fundamental business of the bank is not performing either particularly well. Yes, they're generating big profits, but they're not as big as they used to be. Yeah, $18 billion worth of profits. I mean, that blows most banks out of the water, doesn't it? But it's it? down on where it was when Mr. Gulliver took over. The share price is down since he took over, uh, despite the fact that very soon after he came in, he had a big, impressive plan to improve efficiency at the bank, to cut its costs. Yeah, but he says that you know he's been uh, that plan has been um, derailed by the huge cost of regulation and compliance, and on all the extra burdens that regulators have placed on the banks. They have to hold more capital. They've had to employ armies of compliance officers. They've had to invest billions of dollars in technology to try and stop criminals and uh, hackers from it. Um, you know, infiltrating the financial system. Absolutely, that's true. That has pushed up their costs. And at, at the same time, of course, on the other side of the equation, their income has been hit by the record low interest rates around the world. So they've been squeezed uh, from both directions. Yeah, but that, that could be very positive for them because, you, as we all know, Janet Yellen uh, at the, the US Federal Reserve is, is, is you know, uh, talking quite strongly now about the prospect of raising interest rates in the US. And with all the excess deposits, which are earning almost nothing at uh, HSBC, you know, we're talking about billions of extra dollar profit once those interest rates start to rise. Good news. That is the bullish story, absolutely. And at the same time, you've got very uh, promising uh, businesses around the world, a great mix of emerging market operations. Of course, the counter view to that is that the interest rate rises, which will help on one side of the balance sheet, will also hurt potentially uh, in emerging market loan books because we're expecting to see a lot of fallout in emerging markets from those rate rises. Yeah, one of the other complaints about uh, HSBC is it's got a two and a half trillion dollar balance sheet is it's just too big to manage, too complex to manage, hence these scandals and uh, this, you know, all these extra costs that are being placed on it needs to simplify and there's a plan to, uh, to shrink the bank a bit that's coming, we've written about it um, a few days ago, um, Doug, you know, Douglas Flint is planning to, to exit some markets like Brazil and Turkey, um, simplifying the bank more Getting, trying to get on the right side of regulators, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Douglas Flint and, and Stuart Gulliver have been putting together this plan in recent weeks. They're going to announce it uh, in June at an investor day. Uh, they may give some hint about it at what, as you say, maybe a fiery investor meeting this Friday, shareholder annual shareholder meeting. But I think they'll reserve the main uh, details about it until June. 
But it, yes, I think it's going to be far more radical than the, the trimming that Stuart Gulliver has done over the past four years. It's going to, you know, it could amount to withdrawing from Brazil, from Turkey, yeah. from other key markets. But essentially, these guys, you know, they're going in the right direction. The, the, the management team, they're the right people at the top. There isn't a, a big push from shareholders. And we've spoken to, to, to many of the 20 biggest shareholders. Uh, they're the right people. And, and, and essentially, we shouldn't do down one of the great... British institutions, should we? Well, certainly that's what some shareholders are saying, and there is seem to be pretty solid support for the top two uh, men at the bank. Um, although uh, Douglas came under fire from certainly from politicians and from some shareholders uh, over the past couple of months, that kind of any any idea that you might have to fall on his sword as a as a scapegoat for the for the Swiss uh, disaster seems to have died away. And you know maybe they, the two men at the top will be given another two to three years to try and fix the problems. Okay, so still clouds over the um, HSBC uh, ship, but it sails on, and we'll see how they fare on Friday. Patrick Jenkins, thanks very much.